This video is for educational purposes. Miami is a coastal metropolis in the U.S. state of Florida and the seat of Miami-Dade County in South Florida. With a population of 442,241 as of the 2020 census, it is the second most populous city in Florida after Jacksonville. It is the core of the much larger Miami metropolitan area, which, with a population of 6.14 million, is the second largest metropolitan area in the southeast after Atlanta, and the ninth largest in the United States. Miami has the third largest skyline in the U.S. with over 300 high-rises, 58 of which exceed 491 feet, 150 meters. Subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell so you get notified each time we upload a new video. Miami is a major center and leader in finance, commerce, culture, arts, and international trade. Miami's metropolitan area is by far the largest urban economy in Florida, with a gross domestic product of $344.9 billion as of 2017. According to a 2018 UBS study of 77 world cities, Miami is the third richest city in the U.S. and the third richest globally in purchasing power. Miami is a majority-minority city with a Hispanic and Latino population of 310,472, or 70.2% 70 of the city's population, as of 2020. Downtown Miami has one of the largest concentrations of international banks in the U.S. and is home to several large national and international companies. The Health District is home to several major University of Miami-affiliated hospital and health facilities, including Jackson Memorial Hospital, the nation's largest hospital with 1,547 beds, and the Leonard M. Miller School of Medicine, the University of Miami's Academic Medical Center and Teaching Hospital, and others engaged in health-related care and research. Port Miami, the city's seaport, is the busiest cruise port in the world in both passenger traffic and cruise lines. The Miami metropolitan area is the second most visited city or metropolitan statistical area in the U.S. after New York City, with over 4 million visitors as of 2022. Miami has sometimes been called the gateway to Latin America because of the magnitude of its commercial and cultural ties to the region. In 2022, Miami ranked seventh in the U.S. in business activity, human capital, information exchange, cultural experience, and political engagement. Miami was named after the Miami River, derived from Miami, the historic name of Lake Okeechobee and the American Indians who lived around it. Miami is sometimes colloquially referred to as the 305, Magic City, Gateway to the Americas, Gateway to Latin America, Capital of Latin America, and Vice City. The Tequesta tribe occupied the Miami area for around 2,000 years before contact with Europeans. A village of hundreds of people, dating to 500 to 600 BCE, was located at the mouth of the Miami River. It is believed that the entire tribe migrated to Cuba by the mid-1700s. In 1566, Admiral Pedro Menendez de Aviles, Florida's first governor, claimed the area for Spain. A Spanish mission was constructed one year later. Spain, and briefly Britain, ruled Florida until it ceded it to the United States in 1821. In 1836, the U.S. built Fort Dallas on the banks of the Miami River as part of their development of the Florida Territory and their attempt to suppress and remove the Seminoles. As a result, the Miami area became a site of fighting in the Second Seminole War. Miami is noted as the only major city in the United States founded by a woman. Julia Tuttle, a local citrus grower and a wealthy Cleveland native, was the original owner of the land upon which the city was built. In the late 19th century, the area was known as Biscayne Bay Country, and reports described it as a promising wilderness and one of the finest building sites in Florida. The Great Freeze of 1894 to 1895 hastened Miami's growth, as the crops there were the only ones in Florida that survived. Julia Tuttle subsequently convinced railroad tycoon Henry Flagler to extend his Florida East Coast Railway to the region, for which she became known as the Mother of Miami. Miami was officially incorporated as a city on July 28, 1896, with a population of just over 300. During the early 20th century, migrants from the Bahamas and African Americans constituted 40% of the city's population. 25 when landlords began to rent homes to African Americans around Avenue J, what would later become NW 5th Avenue, a gang of white men with torches marched through the neighborhood and warned the residents to move or be bombed. Miami prospered during the 1920s with an increase in population and development in infrastructure as northerners moved to the city. The legacy of Jim Crow was embedded in these developments. Miami's chief of police at the time, H. Leslie Quigg, did not hide the fact that he, like many other white Miami police officers, was a member of the Ku Klux Klan. 
Unsurprisingly, these officers enforce social codes far beyond the written law. Quig, for example, personally and publicly beat a colored bellboy to death for speaking directly to a white woman. The collapse of the Florida land boom of the 1920s, the 1926 Miami hurricane, and the Great Depression in the 1930s slowed development. When World War II began, Miami became a base for U.S. defense against German submarines due to its prime location on the southern coast of Florida. This brought an increase in Miami's population, 172,172 people lived in the city by 1940. The city's nickname, the Magic City, came from its rapid growth, which was noticed by winter visitors who remarked that the city grew so much from one year to the next that it was like magic. After Fidel Castro rose to power in Cuba following the revolution in 1959, many wealthy Cubans sought refuge in Miami, further increasing the city's population. The city's national profile expanded dramatically in the 1970s, particularly in 1972. The region hosted both the Democratic and Republican national conventions in the 1972 presidential election. The Miami Dolphins also made history with their undefeated, perfect season. The area's educational and cultural institutions had also developed significantly in this period, positioning the city to service a larger and increasingly international population. Miami also developed new businesses and cultural amenities as part of the New South in the 1980s and 1990s. At the same time, South Florida weathered social problems related to drug wars, immigration from Haiti and Latin America, and the widespread destruction of Hurricane Andrew. Racial and cultural tensions sometimes sparked, but the city developed in the latter half of the 20th century as a major international, financial, and cultural center. It is the second largest U.S. city with a Spanish-speaking majority, after El Paso, Texas, and the largest city with a Cuban-American plurality. Miami and its suburbs are located on a broad plain between the Everglades to the west and Biscayne Bay to the east, which extends from Lake Okeechobee southward to Florida Bay. The elevation of the area averages at around 6 feet 1.8 meters above sea level in most neighborhoods, especially near the coast. The highest points are found along the Miami Rock Ridge, which lies under most of the eastern Miami metro. The main portion of the city is on the shores of Biscayne Bay, which contains several hundred natural and artificial barrier islands, the largest of which contains Miami Beach and South Beach. The Gulf Stream, a warm ocean current, runs northward just 15 miles 24 kilometers off the coast, allowing the city's climate to stay warm and mild all year. The surface bedrock under the Miami area is called Miami Oolite or Miami Limestone. This bedrock is covered by a thin layer of soil, and is no more than 50 feet 15 meters thick. Miami Limestone formed as the result of the drastic changes in sea level associated with recent glacial periods, or ice ages. Beginning some 130,000 years ago, the Sangamonian stage raised sea levels to approximately 25 feet 8 meters above the current level. All of southern Florida was covered by a shallow sea. Several parallel lines of reef formed along the edge of the submerged Florida plateau, stretching from the present Miami area to what is now the Dry Tortugas. The area behind this reef line was, in fact, a large lagoon, and the Miami limestone formed throughout the area from the deposition of oolites and the shells of bryozoans. Starting about 100,000 years ago, the Wisconsin glaciation began lowering sea levels, exposing the floor of the lagoon. By 15,000 years ago, the sea level had dropped 300 to 350 feet, 90 to 110 m, below the current level. The sea level rose quickly after that, stabilizing at the current level about 4,000 years ago, leaving the mainland of South Florida just above sea level. Beneath the plain lies the Biscayne Aquifer, a natural underground source of fresh water that extends from southern Palm Beach County to Florida Bay. It comes closest to the surface around the cities of Miami Springs and Hialeah. Most of the Miami metropolitan area obtains its drinking water from the Biscayne Aquifer. As a result of the aquifer, it is not possible to dig more than 15 to 20 feet 5 to 6 m, beneath the city without hitting water, which impedes underground construction, though some underground parking garages exist. For this reason, the mass transit systems in and around Miami are elevated or at grade. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell so you get notified each time we upload a new video. See you in the next one.